Tonight, Motorola moves to China, Twitter gets a powerful new filter, and Facebook banks big bucks in mobile. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show 13 for January 29th, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to the tech feed. Google is selling Motorola to Lenovo. The price for Motorola Mobility, which is the company that makes the Moto X and Moto G smartphones, is $2.91 billion. It's going to Lenovo, one of China's biggest companies. Google bought Motorola in 2012 for $12.5 billion, and the search giant will keep most of Motorola's patents. The sale is subject to regulatory approval in both China and the U.S. In an internal memo to Google employees today, CEO Larry Page said Google bought Motorola to, quote, supercharge the Android ecosystem by creating a stronger patent portfolio. Page said the sale, quote, does not signal a larger shift for our other hardware efforts. The deal doesn't include Motorola's advanced research unit. That group is working on a far future product ideas like the Aura modular smartphone concept and electronic tattoos, and it might be a good fit for Google X Labs. Lenovo's on a tear. The company also bought IBM's low-end server business this week for $2.3 billion. In other Google news, the company has convinced Samsung to change its newest Android user interface. Samsung reportedly agreed to either drop or change its new magazine UX interface, which was promoted at International CES as a replacement for its unpopular TouchWiz UI. Samsung also agreed to drop certain apps that compete directly with Google Apps and Services, according to a report in Recode Today. The magazine UX has been called both Flipboard-like and Microsoft Metro-like, it has not been called Android-like, however, even though it runs on Android. Google and Samsung also announced a deal this week to cross-license patents. It's unclear whether Google's forthcoming sale of Motorola to Lenovo factored into either of these negotiations, but the deal does remove Google as a competitor to Samsung in the smartphone handset market. Google's Android owns 82% of the smartphone OS market, and Samsung controls about one-third of the handset market. Well, the web version of Twitter has new search filters to restrict searches to photos, videos, news, people you follow, and nearby locations. Earlier filters let you specify whether you were searching for photos or people. The official iOS and Android Twitter apps got new search filters back in November. And Twitter's advanced search features still provide extra search operator functions. In other Twitter news, the company has announced a partnership with CNN and the New York startup Dataminer to help journalists cover breaking news. Dataminer uses algorithms to analyze the Twitter firehose of data, and CNN reporters can then use this tool in story building and fact checking efforts. Meanwhile, Facebook's new reading app, Paper, not out yet, but reportedly launching any day, is said to act as an aggregator of rich media content, displaying a mix of news stories from publications like the New York Times and the Washington Post, along with status updates from Facebook users. Well, coming up, it's still winter, but when it comes to the chore of mowing the lawn, how about a lawnmower that runs off grass clippings? That in a moment. But first, joining us today is Billy Steele, associate editor at Engadget, who wrote an article today on Facebook's pretty mega <clears throat> earnings. Hello, Billy. Welcome to the show. Hello, Sarah. So we've got 53%. That's over half of ad revenue now coming from mobile users, 945 million of them. That comes out to about 1.3 billion of Facebook's overall 2.59 billion in revenue for the fourth quarter of 2013. It wasn't that long ago that people were lamenting Facebook's inability to really win at mobile. Do you think the company turned it around quicker than expected? Um, I think so. If you, surprisingly, at the beginning of 2013, um, desktop traffic on Facebook still outranked mobile. Um, so over the course of 2013, they were able to not only um, make the transition um, sort of into mobile, but win at mobile with their um, ad revenue as well. We've got 757 million total daily users, 1.23 billion monthly users. That's up from 1.19 billion in Q3. Now, the total monthly user count increased 3.36% this quarter. But if you look at the U.S. and Canada specifically, it only grew 1%. 
Facebook has admitted in the past, I think it was back in October, that there was an issue with ret retention of teens, the youngins on Facebook. Do you think this is a continuing issue? So Facebook's really making a push um, in emerging markets, this sort of like connecting the world initiative. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg's mentioned it several times. He mentioned it again today on the earnings call. Um, what they did not mention was um, back in Q3 in, in October, there was a, one statement about the decline among younger teens um, use on Facebook. And someone point blank asked uh, CFO, David Ebersman today about that, and he said that there was no new news to report on that front. So you can take that for uh, for whatever you want to take it for, but as of right now, we don't have anything new um, as far as decline in teen use on Facebook goes. Speaking of David Ebersman, he also said on the earnings call today that Instagram, although he didn't provide specific numbers, had doubled its user base in the last year. We also know that Mark Zuckerberg... He said it on the earnings call today, but he has said it in the past that we should expect more standalone apps from Facebook. What do you think is Facebook's next Instagram? Well, it's going to be tough. Uh, when they acquired Instagram, it already had a pretty solid user base and a solid following. But um, early reports are that um, there's a Flipboard style competitor um, that's been pretty heavily rumored. So a newsreader of sorts. Um, mm -hmm. is rumored probably called be Paper, at least internally. Right. So that's probably going to be the next big um, sort of release. And there's also been a calendar app um, mentioned. And there's a third one. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but those were the big two. Um, so uh, a reader style app and uh, a calendar app is probably the next, maybe the next two things that you'll see from Facebook. A couple of interesting things Facebook has been doing in the ad space that has uh, contributed to revenue is mobile app install ads. Those help developers get apps discovered outside of app stores. Also, a new, a new mobile app re-engagement ad that Facebook's been using gets users back into apps that they downloaded but perhaps forgot about. Do you think these are solid spends for engagement? Right. So um, there's a new ad network that Facebook's beta testing now, and it's what you mentioned, um, sort of targeting folks to get them outside of Facebook and back into apps um, to get them to download apps that may be buried in um, Apple's App Store or Google Play. So um, I'm kind of interested to see how that adoption um, sort of plays out because you've got um, folks that are going to have to opt into that. Obviously, Facebook's figured out the targeted ads thing, and they're pretty good at it. So um, really, the success of that depends on how well they can sell it to these uh, third-party app developers. Well, Billy, thanks so much for talking with us today. Thanks for having me. All right. You can find more of Billy's work at Engadget. Com. It's a great site. You should read it. All right. A new robot lawnmower runs on a renewable fuel that's plentiful and easily available because it's grass. The idea behind this mower is to use the grass as it cuts as fuel. The inventor, Jason Force, a grad student at George Mason University, is still looking for funding, but here's how it works. Cuts your grass with an electric bar cutter. Some of the clippings are gathered before exiting and then pelletized, I just learned that word, with high temperature and pressure. The pellets then move into a small biomass gasifier reactor and then convert to gas to fuel the engine. The mower is autonomous using GPS and proximity sensors. How's that for a lazy Saturday afternoon? And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for stopping by. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.